Would you would taking Jermaine Johnson at two be a reach? It's a risk more than a reach. I don't think any of the edge rushers outside of Aiden Hutchinson and I guess you could say Kayvon Thibodeau. I mean, outside of those two, they're all a reach, really, in theory. But it's a risk because if Aiden goes number one and you decide to take Jermaine Johnson or, like I said, Trayvon Walker over a Kayvon Thibodeau and then he works out, I mean, this is a GM's job on the line we're talking. This is the future of a franchise. It's not a reach. It's a risk. It's a big risk. Question right to you says, is Tyndall from Georgia worth the 34th pick? No, because... Yes and no. No, the answer is no. I don't believe so. You're not taking him at 34. You have to look at your positional needs. And depending on who you want at 32 is going to dictate if he's even an option at 34. Drake London, if he fell to 32, that would be amazing. I don't know if that's possible. I you do take like him. Drake I don't think that's possible, yeah. but that's amazing. Yeah, I love I love Drake London. He's my my favorite wide receiver in this year's class. I just don't think he falls there. But no doubt, I'm with you. You just got to grab it. What quarterback would you take at 32, 34, Matt Corral or Sam Howell by Mitch McConnell? Matt Corral, because I rather him bust so hard where I just look at the pick and I'm disgusted than to take Baker Mayfield 2.0 and get stuck with him throwing 20 interceptions a year and having to say, oh, well, at least he can throw for 3,800 yards. Yeah, please, God, no. Okay, so Nick says, let's take Malik and trade for Baker. Well, I think that would be a punch-you-in-the-face moment. I think that would be eating chainsaws, taking battery acid, and putting it in my eyes if they went that route. But uh, good, good one there. In the front there. office if that ever happened. <laughs> I would think Brad Holmes would uh, fire himself. Let's see here. No Jordan Davis at 2, but at 32. Would you take Jordan? If he, I don't think he's going to fall 32, Jordan Davis. He could be gone. Yeah, by again, the... the lines are picking at the beginning of the first yeah. round and at the end of it. You're not in a position where you're picking like two and eighteen, where that's a legitimate conversation. At thirty-two, I mean, everyone who's anyone is likely going to be off the board. And you know, my theory is, can the Detroit Lions evolve and draft someone like a TJ Watt at thirty? And I'm not talking about the position. I'm talking about the caliber player. And I feel finally with Brad Holmes, I think they have the ability to do that. What do you think of Sky Moore, the wide receiver out of Western? He's a high riser, local guy. What do you think about him? Where do you think he gets drafted? I mean, PFF has him ranked the 34th best player. To be honest with you, I'm not touching him till the third round. I'm, I'm kind of with you. I, I, there, I think there's other wide receivers that would be sitting there at two, and uh, I just don't think he's going to go that high. I'm with you there. We got a super chat, $10 from Travis the Goat Doily. Would you guys draft George Pickens or David Bell? This question. That's a great question. I'm taking Pickens all day, actually. I, I like Pickens. He, sh he showed a lot. David Bell is pretty good. I think after the, the combine, it maybe hurt him a little bit. But I think Pickens, for sure, I think got a little bit better there. So who is a guy you think that should probably be getting a little more love that's not being talked about? Definitely got to be... Devin Lloyd. I am so high on Devin Lloyd. I think, you know, you see him going anywhere from top 10 to top 20, falling to 32 in some uh, simulators. You just don't know. He's not getting much press nationally. Devin Lloyd is a guy I'm, I'm all in on. I was, I was looking at Devin Lloyd week four last year, and I said, this is my favorite linebacker in this year's draft. I said, there's no way he would fall to 32. And then lately I'm seeing mock drafts where he's fallen to that far. I say, if that happens, you have to run up and put in the ticket to get this guy. Freaking on Woodward if he falls to 32. Yeah, I, I think I'll fall out of my chair uh, because he would be a definite game changer for the Detroit Lions. And not only does it fill a need, but he's a we haven't had a good linebacker since DeAndre Levy. Before that, Spielman. So we need to get that enforcer, and that's what he is. Yeah, that is a very good point, actually. It's been such a long time since this team has had a – legitimate linebacker. I mean, Boss Bailey for, what, year two, and that was it? Mm-hmm. It, it, we need to have – that's something we've been getting destroyed in the middle of the field, and we need to solidify that spot, or it's just going to keep happening and happening and happening. And we've seen when you have a that really good – That defense was pretty good when you had him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, M most definitely. And it, 
If we can get a Lloyd, I think the defense would tra- imagine him too with Derek Barnes together. Young combination, helping out Derek Barnes. I think that would be solid. I think that would be very solid. Would you trade to the Giants for five in their second and fifth? Would you trade two for the Giants' fifth, second, and a fifth? Okay, so we go down to five. We get their two and a fifth. God, that that would be it. Would be close. What do you think? That's a tough decision. Yeah. Um, I love the idea. My concern is I lose control of who I can select at five. Yeah, that would be my concern as well. You know, but getting another second round pick, such a deep class, specifically in defense, it would help out. It would be a tough one. That would be a hard call. You're still getting less than generally what you would get in a, in a normal draft, but there's just not that number one guy. There's not that quarterback. There's that, not a quarterback. That's yep. the thing. There's no quarterback. You trade. You try to trade up in last year's draft from five to two. You're giving up two first uh, future first round picks minimum. A hundred percent. You have to take less this year. You have to take less. Ten dollars super chat from my guy Travis the Goat. Would you draft Nick Benito? And if so, what round? Thirty-four. Depending again how the board shapes out, what you do at number two and thirty-two is really going to dictate that. But he's a guy. I don't see being available after 40, 42. So, I mean, unless you're able to trade back, I don't see that happening. And if you're taking an edge at two, well, that kind of eliminates you from taking an edge rusher because you just signed Charles Harris. So that's kind of over and done with. You're good uh, in terms of depth at the edge position. Folks, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. We are three away from 100, 271 in the building. I will get to your question if I get to it. Uh, Just repost it if I miss it. Did the Lions do poorly in free agency? I'm going to say, look, a lot of people wanted to spend a lot of big money in free agency. I understand the frustration. I am frustrated at some parts, but at the same time, just like Adam was saying earlier, do you want to be the Jacksonville Jaguars and throw a boatload of money at players who are not getting paid? They gave a wide receiver three slash two number one money. I don't want to see that anymore. We did that with Trey Flowers. We've done that with selected free agents in the past, and it's hurt us for years down the road. We literally just released Trey Flowers, and ever since we had him, it hurt our books. I don't want to make that same mistake. I think it's really important to build through the draft and get selected free agents. So as I am a little frustrated maybe with the the lack of getting maybe a safety right now, and signing a David Blau, I'm not upset with not getting every single player like an Allen Robinson going out, getting a Von Miller, paying all this money because it's just eventually going to hurt your team. What do you think about that? That's the mentality you have to have. Listen, patience, a little bit. Patience over complacency. Depth is a key need right now, and I don't think the Lions are doing poorly in free agency. I'm not interested in paying Christian Kirk. $21 $21 million a year, even though if you actually look at the contract, they're probably not going to end up paying him that money. But it was enough for him to leave the situation in Arizona. He'll probably see half of it guaranteed. And if he performs well, he'll get the whole damn thing. 100%. Are you guys upset the Lions are at least trying to, for Deshaun Watts, which I know we don't have a shot. First off, he has a no-trade clause, and he will not be coming to the Detroit Lions. That's not where he wants to go. And to get a Deshaun Watson, you'd probably have to give up three three first-round picks, maybe a second-round pick and a couple players. And with a team that's in a rebuild mode, I just don't think that would be part of the plan. Plus, you'd have to get rid of Jared Goff, who's going to kill you in the cap. So I'm not upset because he wasn't going to come here anyways. What's your thoughts on this? Yeah, look, I mean, Deshaun Watson was never truly an option, a realistic option. That was never going to happen. And at the end of the day, the Lions are on this roadmap. They're on this journey. And the journey gets to the point where after this season, you're either draft a quarterback in this class or you're taking one next year. And when you do that, you're going to look at this football team. And if it goes in the most optimistic way, then you're looking at the Kansas City Chiefs build. You draft a quarterback. You sit them year one. Jared Goff is your Alex Smith. You have a good football team. You're winning games. And when the time comes to make the switch, you make it. $2 Super Chat. How about these linebackers, Chanel, Muma, Troy Anderson? I do like uh, Chanel and Muma. 
I think they'll probably be there at 34 if that's a route they want to go. It just depends who else is there. I definitely would take a look at them at that spot. Got a question here from Draft Junkie. Lions are upset we re-signed Boyle and didn't go after a more solid backup. Look, I'm not a fan of Tim Boyle. I think Tim Boyle is a terrible quarterback. He's a, he's a bad backup. I don't want him on this team. My thing is if we don't take a quarterback in the draft or even get one in an uh, undrafted free agent, I'm going to be upset. That That's my thing. I just don't like, – if, if Jared Goff goes down, do you think Tim Boyle's going to win a game? No. Very, uh, I, I try to find the story where there isn't a story. I try to find what's underneath it. If Jared Goff gets hurt, this football team's going to lose a lot of football games this year. <laughs> and you don't want a backup quarterback going in and messing up that draft pick. I'm telling you. They're all in on Jared Goff this season. They've already made that commitment. He goes down, hell, we'll take a top five pick. I'm game for it. <laughs> Ready for that top five pick, man. Yeah, if, if Goff goes down, it's going to be it's gonna be a long season, folks. So we just got to pray that he doesn't go down. I don't want another top five pick Funny, again. We're actually saying that about Jared Goff. I know. You know what's so funny is last year during the season, the first six, seven games, I'm like, please just put in somebody else. Please put in somebody else. Then we've seen Tim Boyle play in Seattle. And I remember when when uh, when Goff came back, I said, please don't get hurt. Please don't get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and then he went down. I said, that no. Was it was a brutal start to the season, man. Oh, my God. Especially that first game against San Francisco. The fumble, the interception. Oh, my God. Oh my God! It was it was a, it was absolutely brutal. I think it's going to be much. I hopefully it's going to be better this year. I'm not going to say much better. Realistically, what do you think the Lions' record will be on January 2023? Well, I'm hoping the Lions can get to seven wins. I think six to seven. They have to do that. If they can't get to six to seven wins, we have an issue here because a lot of players are coming back that are healthy. Frank Rag now. Taylor Decker hopefully can actually play the whole time. Panesu in year two. TJ Hawkinson healthy. We're talking about better set of wide receivers. If we can't get to that, there's an issue. And obviously the schedule is easier, I think, this year than it was yes uh, last year. What do you think about that record prediction? I'm with you. I think six is the minimum amount of games they have to win for me not to. They have to win six games minimum. You have to take that progressive step. Dan Campbell and Jim Schwartz are such different characters, but they've come into the Detroit Lions in very similar situations. Bottom tier, horrible salary cap, horrible roster. All right, two wins for Schwartz, three wins for Campbell year one. Well, Schwartz won six games year two, and Dan Campbell, I would like him to win six. I do think they can have nine wins, honestly. I think they're a nine and eight football team if they draft some good players which, again, again, this is all coming from confidence in Brad Holmes. I think you're going to get three starters in the th first three, four picks minimum. And then you look at year three, well, Matthew Stafford was finally healthy with Schwartz. They won 10 games with an average roster, to be honest, outside of Calvin Johnson. And then you look at Dan Campbell's year three. Bro, you're going to have to contend for the NFC North. And if you can't, well, we have an issue. Now you just brought up former quarterback Matthew Stafford. I I don't know your take on this. I haven't I haven't heard it. What did you think about the Matthew Stafford trade? Did you think it was a good idea to send him to to L.A.? Uh, do you think it was smart for Brad Holmes to do that, or do you think that was a mistake because he went and won a Super Bowl? No, we, he wasn't winning anything here. That's just the truth. The, the truth of the matter is, for twelve years, this GM, this head coaching staff, everything that we've equipped him with was never even close to the standard that it was in Los Angeles. I was happy when he was traded. He was never going to win anything in Detroit. And that's just the, the, the unfortunate truth in it. You had a franchise quarterback. The guy was a very good quarterback. Sorry. I mean, I don't know what people expected. I was happy. You got two first-round picks. You got a third-round pick. I thought it was a great move 